latest in tech and accessibility. This is Access Tech Live with Stephen Scott and Mark Aflalo. Welcome back everyone. Now if you watch AMI TV, then no doubt you will know our next guest. Mark and I appear on his show regularly, but we thought it would be time to turn the tables. Uh, now you know him as the host of Now with Dave Brown. Oddly enough, his name is Dave Brown in real life as well. Welcome to Access Tech Live, Dave. Stephen, they named the show before they hired me. It gave me the inside edge when it came time to apply. I'm so grateful to be here, guys. For all the times that I've put you on the spot, you guys get the opportunity to do it to me today. Yeah, you get the chance to to actually face some of our questions, which I'm quite pleased about. This is this I've been looking forward to this all week. So uh, yeah, let's dive in. Um, so first off, what's it like being on the other side? How does it feel? Are you nervous? Little bit nervous, little bit nervous. I, uh, I'm i not used to being put on the spot. I usually have a little bit more control. So you guys have taken that away from me, but but I trust you. I trust both of you deeply as responsible broadcasters. Well, that was your first mistake, but okay, we'll <laughs> let you by. Um, okay, so let's talk about International Day of Persons with Disabilities. And you know, I wanna ask you first off, are you a person with a disability or are you a disabled person? Ooh, Stephen, going right for the uh, hot and heavy topics here on person first language when it comes to disability. I would say that I lean towards using person first. So a person with a disability, a person who has albinism, a person who is legally blind. That said, I really try to honor however people want to identify because I've been on the other side of it where I've described my disability as being vision impaired and actually had people with the pitchforks come out at me and say, we don't say that, that's not a word that we like. So I find when it comes to identifying disability in my own, I prefer person first for me. I do not judge anybody else for what the words that they want to use. Yeah, I've got to say, Dave, I'm with you on this, right? I am a person with a disability. However, everyone is entitled to identify themselves as they wish. And I think that's the key point out of all of this. We should be able to identify any way we wish, uh, because I, I can understand why some people put disabled first. But, you know, for me, I'm a person. So I, I'm, I'm totally down on that. Yeah, it's one of these things that I try not to lose too much sleep over, because there are bigger, more pressing issues than simply the order of a couple of words. Dave, I, I got to ask you, how do you think the world is doing? And obviously, this is opinion, and everybody's opinion is going to be different here. How do you think the world is doing at making sure that we're aware um, of, of of everybody and all the disabilities that are out there? Because it's it's a it's a big responsibility that I think we all have on our shoulders. How do you think we're doing? Mark, it's interesting you ask me that question today because just yesterday, the University of Calgary put out some research about the accessibility of three different Canadian cities, Calgary, Vancouver, and Ottawa, and found that 60% of public spaces in those three cities were deemed inaccessible. Uh -huh. So I, I think that when you start looking at that kind of data, despite a lot of positive lip service and despite a lot of really great progress, I don't want to lose focus of the progress, but there is still a huge way to go when you're talking about simple things like having uh, doorways that are, that are big enough, enough accessible parking spots, enough elevators, accessible washrooms. Like this is some of the really basic stuff that unfortunately the world has not quite caught up with yet. That said, the flip side, because I want to be pragmatic and positive, there are so many organizations and people that are devoted to making the change that even if that number is 60% inaccessible today, I've got a lot of faith that that number is going to come down in a significant way over the next five to 10 years. And Dave, I know you'll echo this view, uh, mainly because we all like our jobs here, but you know, I, I think I'm really proud of being part of AMI and a network that talks about disability every day. And I think that's ultimately it, isn't it? it that's, it's the conversation that we have as disabled people that other people can listen into and engage with. So we want to get more people listening into these conversations to understand what the challenges are. Absolutely. We, I mean, I said at the top, I want to talk about the progress. I want to talk about the positives, but you can't ignore the challenges <laughs> either. You have to talk about everything, right? It's the real world. At a certain point, yeah. you have to put yourself in the real world and understand where these things all connect. But Stephen, when it comes to what 
we're doing here at AMI, whether it's your show, Access Tech Live, whether it's Kelly and Ramya, whether it's some of the incredible pre-produced programming done across the network as well. One of the things that's become very cool is that disability conversations can be implicit or they can be explicit. Sometimes you and I can have an, a real explicit conversation simply about some accessible technology or simply about disability culture. But we're also very capable through shows, shows like yours and like mine, where we can have some of these implicit conversations, that we can talk about a new feature in Google Maps or Apple Maps that is not designed for disability, per se, but through the perspective of two people who live on the blindness spectrum, that you and I can talk about how we're utilizing that technology, maybe not as the singular focal point, but as either an overall tinting of the conversation or an avenue in or out of the topic. So I think one of the things about AMI and the work we're doing is that sometimes that conversation can be very in your face about disability, and sometimes it's just about platforming people with disabilities who have interests that range well beyond disability itself. You know, so we, we talk tech, you know, you mentioned a couple companies right there, some of the big ones. Um, they seem to take on a role of responsibility to uh, make sure awareness about accessibility is is constantly in what they do. Uh, I got a two-part question for you, Dave. Uh, why do you think they take that so seriously, number one? And what role do you think they have as tech companies in this mission? Well, uh, Mark, the first answer to your question, which is a great question, I think it's a fundamental understanding of the research that's been done by organizations like the Conference Board of Canada or the Rick Hansen Foundation about the actual economic value of people with disabilities, right? We can have the human rights conversation and we should have the human rights conversation, but there is a lot of spending power that exists across the community, whether it be people with disabilities themselves as their own individual or whether it be the other people in their lives. So these tech companies, they know that if they want to sell me their phone or their computer, they better have the features that I like, the high contrasts and the large fonts, and, a, and an ease of use, and ease of usability. So I think purely from a capitalistic point of view, they're doing some of the work that maybe other sectors have not quite figured out the whole way yet. And then the flip side is... I, I, I don't want to put too much uh, too much smoke up the behinds of uh, big tech, <laughs> but the one thing about big tech is it's it's in its nature it's supposed to be cutting edge. So I I see that if they're envisioning a future, they are thinking about people with disabilities as part of that future as well. So there's a responsibility if you're going to reshape society, you have to be thinking about inclusion in that reshaping. How, how some of those tools, like, I mean, anything that any of those companies might have come out, is there anything specific that stands out to you as something that you've you've leveraged, you've taken advantage of, whether it's something you've talked about or something even that we might have talked about in, in your life that helps you on a day-to-day -day basis? You, you know, this is going to sound like the biggest cop-out in the world, and I apologize, <laughs> but the smartphone, to me, as a person who's yeah. legally blind, as just a mainstream piece of technology is such an amazing tool. I, I you know, I'm I'm young enough to remember a time that I traveled across Canada as a legally blind person and was using maps and using MapQuest and pre-planning routes, how many blocks from the train station did I have to walk south to get to my hotel? I can't even fathom doing that now, knowing the way that I use navigation uh, app applications on my phone, also leveraging that in connection with Bluetooth headphones or other wireless headphones, but I'll tell you this, my phone has also eliminated the need for me to carry a magnifying glass around with me. I used to perpetually have to carry a magnifying glass to read the small fonts all over this world that get in my way, or I used to have to carry a telescope around all the time with me if I was traveling to read street signs or read business signs. The fact that I don't necessarily need to carry a bag around with me when I'm making my way around because my camera in my phone serves as a magnifying glass and a telescope. I mean, that is just such a cool thing. So Mark, I know that's a real cop-out answer and I apologize for it, okay. but, but, but it's, it's the truth, it's the truth. 
I, I think what's more surprising is you're, you're saying all this and you're an Android phone user, I believe. So <laughs> I'm kind of amazed that you, you're finding so much use out of this device. It's incredible. I'm learning things here, Dave. Uh, but you mentioned, you mentioned the magnifier. And of course, Google has done a huge amount of work, actually, in the low vision space. And I, I think one thing I've often said, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, but I often feel that Google and Android is a really brilliant product for people with low vision. Not that it's not for blind people. It absolutely is. I joke around a lot. But it, it is a fantastic product. But the way that the devices are built, the screen quality, the ability to raise that text size up to, what, 56 point, even mm -hmm, in some cases, mm -hmm. be more dynamic with that text. It's much more manageable for people on those screens. as big screens. It seems that Google and Android really is a low vision product. What do you say to that? Do you, do you agree? So I have been a Samsung phone user, plug for Samsung here. Anytime they wanted to sponsor the show, they're welcome to plug for <laughs> Samsung here. I've been using Samsung Galaxy phones since the second I got a smartphone. And I'll, I'll paint the picture for you guys. I was in one of the uh, large Canadian pharmacies that also had a mobile department in the winter of 2011. And the person put an iPhone in my hand and put a Samsung Galaxy in my hand. And he said, Dave, play around, see which one works for you. And Steven, intuitively, that Samsung phone using the Android operating system, within 30 seconds of touching the phone, I was figuring out how to make the font bigger, how to navigate around. It just, for whatever reason, just intuitively worked for me. And it's only gotten better and better and better as I've gotten newer models over the years. I am brand loyal, maybe to the point of a fault, simply because how easy I find that phone to use from a low vision perspective, making fonts bigger, zooming in and out. It's like one or two clicks. It's not a series of going through settings to get it done. Auto, when you blow up the fonts on a page, auto-filling, not having to sort of scroll back and forth to the point that your thumbs cramp up. It, it, there's just some stuff they do so naturally that makes my experience as a user easy. Okay, Dave, you know, we can't all be perfect, okay? Okay, um, okay I got to ask you, before we let you go, what would your answer to our question of the day be if you were to tell someone one thing about your disability? What would that be? I would say that it's complicated. Not that your question is complicated, that my disability is complicated because it's hard to identify any singular barrier that I'm going to encounter on the day-to-day -day because I'm light sensitive, because I'm legally blind, but because I have a little bit of sight, it can be a little bit of a mishmash. And that's one of those beautiful moments in life where it's a reminder as maybe you approach a person with a disability, oftentimes asking them open-ended questions about maybe how you might be able to offer them some assistance or uh, you know, what are, what are are they trying to do? What what are they trying to accomplish? I think that it's a reminder that disability is not some kind of singular monolith, that people like Stephen and I can both identify as people who are blind, but our needs are not similar. So that would be the big takeaway, that my disability is complicated, that most disability is complicated, and that disability itself is not some singularity. Everyone's bringing their own lived experience to the table. Yeah, it's just like life itself, right? I mean, that's the that's the part of this that people fail to understand. They don't see the, the separation at all. Uh, Dave, it's been absolutely wonderful talking to you. I'm so glad you came on the show. Please come back again. There's so much more we could pick up on in this. Uh, even though you're an Android user, <laughs> we will let you come back. Uh, Dave Brown, host of, I believe it is still called Now with Dave Brown. It hasn't changed in the last hour, so we're good. Uh, you're back on air tomorrow. Uh, everyone says you're coming back, so that's fantastic. Uh, you can catch the show every day on AMI-TV. Of course, there's the podcast as well. Dave, thanks so much for coming on. It was my great pleasure. Congratulations to both of you. You are tremendous broadcasters. Congratulations on all the success. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Stephen, coming up, an accessibility advocate who's working on making diabetes treatments more accessible. Derek Lackey joins us next here on Access Tech Live. We want to hear from you. Follow us on social media and get involved at Access Tech Live. We'll be right back.